take the committee meeting. I, uh, as far as I know, we will have uh, Gary, uh, Gary here, but uh, uh, we might as well get started without him. Uh, let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And, uh, uh, Chief, would you like to do the roll call? Yes, I would. Mayor Weiss? Here. Committee Member and Chairman Larry Sweeney? Here. Committee, committee Member John Rosario? Here. Uh, committee Member Gary Lauder? Committee Member Michael Lepress is excused. Committee Member Mary Whitmer? Present. Okay. Uh, the next item is approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Are there any uh, suggested changes or revisions? We retain a motion for approval. I make a motion for approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No, no voters. <laughs> uh, the uh, Atherton Future Transportation Issues Committee uh, has nothing to report. Uh, we uh, do have to uh, allow time for public <coughs> comments uh, from anyone who'd like to make a comment. Oh, should we be recording this? Uh, you're, he's recording it? Okay, good. Usually there's a tape recorder here. Um, so for, uh, that you can only comment on things that aren't already on the agenda. So are there any public comments? Seeing none, uh, we have two presentations tonight. And uh, uh, please let me know how long you think your presentation will last. Uh, and uh, we'll try to hold you to that. Uh, and the first one is from uh, uh, Casey? Yes. How about 12 minutes? 12 yeah. minutes. All right. We'll hold you to 12 minutes. <laughs> you said it was about all the time. We have a lot of slides, but I will move quickly. Um, Thank you for the opportunity tonight to, to uh, present to you um, our progress on the uh, Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. My name is Casey Hildreth with all the planning and design. Uh, along with WTRANS, we are the consultant team on the project. Um, tonight, very briefly running through just sort of uh, you know, what we've done over the past six months, eight months, and then um, get to some of the, the big concepts. Um, just to let you know sort of the, where we are at uh, with developing sort of the first sort of comprehensive vision for uh, the town. Um, we have some very uh, straightforward objectives. Uh, you know, the general goal is to provide a comprehensive plan um, and resource for identifying improvements and, and actions uh, to increase active transportation. Uh, we sort of had a list from the town early on in terms of the, the specific objectives. Uh, those are uh, all uh, reflected up here with a little bit of refinement. Uh, the first one to me is really that sort of kind of the key um, you know, since the passage of a complete streets policy where you need to accommodate all modes, uh, pedestrians, cyclists, um, what does that mean for the community uh, that really has, you know, cherishes its character? Uh, we're not talking about sidewalks everywhere, so what are we talking about? Um, along with the other objectives, improving safety, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> we've been fortunate to have a great group of uh, stakeholders uh, first identified uh, by the towns, by town staff. Um, it's been uh, quite representative of the region, uh, not just residents, folks who work at the schools here, folks who commute through on their bicycle, uh, and some neighboring advocates, uh, neighboring jurisdictional representatives. I've uh, had several meetings sort of along the way to help us uh, um, define the vision, uh, including a walking, biking tour we had uh, in, in November with about 22 participants. You can see an image here. Uh, it was a lovely Saturday, and thanks to Menlo School for hosting. Um, we also had an online survey uh, with almost 300 respondents, which, which was uh, more than our goal. Um, again, similar to the SAG, a lot of, a lot of residents, but then also um, folks who weren't necessarily from uh, the town, but who, who use the streets 
uh, and facilities. And uh, I, I will say it's probably pretty, pretty skewed a little bit towards the school population since we were able to sort of utilize those lists and get, and get the word out through our, our stakeholder advisory group. Uh, really just asked a number of questions about uh, things that we, kept, we knew we were going to be introducing into the project. Uh, the goal really was to, to uh, you know, educate as well and let, let folks know what are these types of facilities that we typically focus on, uh, but with an emphasis on you know, what's compatible with Atherton. And, and uh, we can come back to this if I think it's interesting, but uh, generally, you know, wh where are the priority locations, corridors for improvements from both the pedestrian and bicycle standpoint? They were really uh, mirrored each other. Uh, El Camino is the big winner or the big loser, depending on your perspective. Uh, Valparaiso, uh, Atherton Avenue, and um, Elena also is up there as well, I think because of this, the school um, representation. Um, very consistent between those two modes. Um, we also uh, did an inventory, a very detailed inventory, of about 33 miles of, of Atherton roadways. Um, you know, wanting to know what's the, the shoulder condition. Uh, if you don't have sidewalks, what, what is a walkable environment? Um, and what might be the, you know, some of the, the barriers to, to implementation. Uh, this is all put into, ge uh, into uh, you know, online ge or geographic information systems mapping uh, tool. So it's gonna have a lot, I think, some life after you know, we're done. There'll be some good information for town staff or future consultants to utilize. Uh, for example, on the drainage master plan, I think there's some, some opportunity there. Uh, bottom line is, um, you know, there's about a third of the, of, of the streets that we inventory, not, not the whole town. Uh, that, that wasn't walkable. Uh, we sort of had a, a sort of visual definition of what was and what was uh, semi-walkable. Uh, most of that was actually landscaping. Um, and uh, so here we have a map. Uh, here's the network that you can see was, was inventory. Uh, blue uh, being the more walkable uh, areas. Yellow uh, being the, the, the not walkable. Green is in the middle. Um, the red circles are the priority intersections uh, based on the survey as well as the, the walking biking tour. Uh, so some really good fine grain uh, uh, data uh, that you know, you know, the town can use. We, we generally aren't recommending you know, sweeping capital projects to clean this up, but as you notice, like say, for example, Atherton, um, there's just a couple segments that where maybe it's some landscaping that you can work with a property owner on to get a continuous corridor um, for walkability. Um, ADA issues, I'll, I'll kind of be, I'm going to skip this actually, uh, there's an upcoming ADA master plan, you know, because that's sort of a legal document, we, we certainly are, are, are commenting on that in our plan, um, but there's a lot of other detail I think that this, uh, that effort we'll get into uh, that we can help uh, tee up. Um, we mainly focused on the, the municipal code language and general plan policy language that um, uh, essentially tries to, to uh, uh, describe this as the uh, legal or preferred uh, cross section of the walkway. Uh, as you can see, that there's not a walkable segment um, that is represented in the current um, policy. So one of our uh, big moves is to, to you know, come up with options for uh, providing design guidance on, on what could be a walkable segment. Uh, here you see the, the design um, street fronting uh, uh, language uh, being uh, implemented to a T. Uh, here at, at, on Emily, um, and you can see it's, it's not uh, a walkable environment, um, certainly for, for folks in, in wheelchairs, but then also when, when there's uh, inclement weather. Uh, another issue was just you know rocks and other obstacles sort of being six feet off the roadway. Uh, we think there's some flexibility there to, to help uh, make it more pedestrian friendly. So here's sort of four snapshots, options. One is uh, on the top left there, really similar to what you have today, but just making that first three feet off the roadway. Uh, what's required by ADA to be, to be a walkable surface. Uh, we get into you know, other options, including actually bringing those rocks uh, closer to the, the roadway a little bit uh, so you don't have them right in the middle of what could be a walkable environment. And then I'm, I'm most excited actually about the bottom right, uh, the mm -hmm. idea of a green, green gutter, which is sort of a somewhat new and innovative concept, uh, been implemented uh, though uh, quite frequently. Um, to essentially convey stormwater just like a normal gutter, uh, valley gutter would, uh, but it gives you a nice buffer as a pedestrian and as a resident, as a driver, you have a nice, um, you, you have that aesthetic that I think you, you, you will appreciate. Uh, you don't have the traditional curb and, side, and, and sidewalk. Um, you, know, you can introduce rough materials, porous uh, uh, concrete uh, to I think you know, get at the aesthetic 
um, that the town would like, uh, as well as having a lot of function for drainage and for pedestrians. Uh, you know, I would pick this over this, um, and I think I think others would as well. Um, and so, looking at the next wave of, of drainage improvements, trying to, to match that up with uh, pedestrian priorities and, and not um, prohibit uh, cycle lanes. If you looked at crash data the last uh, five years available, uh, many more bike collisions than pedestrian. Um, El Camino is really the worst in terms of the two fatalities at Isabella Watkins. It's an offset intersection. There's nothing on El Camino in terms of accommodation besides the shoulder. Uh, lots of high speeds. I think you, you already know this, uh, but it does help us. You, know, you can actually see it at the Menlo Atherton High School as well, so a cluster along uh, Middlefield. Uh, and then uh, we picked up a cluster of, of, of collisions in 2012 data along uh, Alameda. So uh, where are we at in terms of the bikeway network? We just pretty much showed you that in the collision map. But this is uh, taking the countywide uh, um, bicycle uh, network and really refining it uh, to add some local uh, connections like Atherton Avenue, um, Fair Oaks, uh, as a sort of shared lane, not, not a lot of treatment to it, but just uh, wayfinding. And then you're really uh, looking at what's already the major corridor, the middle field, Valparaiso, Alameda, uh, looking to beef those up with some, uh, some new treatments. And then Selby Lane is really another one we see as a, as a, um, a great safe route to the school project. Uh, I'm going to skip that and just give you some uh, visual images. Uh, my firm put together this document called the National Association of City Transportation Officials. Uh, urban des uh, Bikeway Design Guide, uh, really just sort of what's the next generation of bike facilities. They're not all bike lanes, they're not all green, if, you, if you're familiar with that. Uh, here's an example of a bike boulevard, which we, uh, is actually quite consistent uh, with some of the streets and character uh, introducing green infrastructure, but just you see those little markings on the roadway with the bicycle and arrows. Uh, very um, sort of subtle uh, wayfinding. Uh, here's another, um, and along one of the, the countywide north-south uh, bike boulevards, here we have Elena and Isabella. So you're coming from Valparaiso, you want to make that left-hand turn there. Uh, clearly not a great day for walking on that side. Uh, you also have a lot of just sort of uh, uh, pavement, frankly. And this is one of the areas that we do double-checked with the drainage master plan area. There's been uh, several uh, uh, channel floods in this area. Uh, so one opportunity could be to, to really reclaim this and reconfigure this intersection, uh, make it much more permeable, make it soak in a lot of that stormwater, um, at the same time providing you know, new opportunities away from the traffic for, for pedestrians moving through here. I've seen a lot of folks with, with their dog, dogs and, or, or jogging through here. And then also you have a, a much easier bike connection. How am I doing on time here? It's coming, it's coming. Uh, uh, you're doing great. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, we can talk more about this. The other big move, and I'll, so here's some of the, the, the bike lane treatments that, um, you know, we can kind of propose generally, and, and they'll be implemented along Middlefield and Valparaiso as part of a, the One Bay Area grant uh, that was awarded last year. Um, you know, and then this could be something that we look at for El Camino Real in terms of uh, our big move for El Camino is just we need to get, we want to study anyway to get rid of one of those travel lanes uh, either on one side or both sides to introduce a bike lane, something like this uh, with a, a wider sidewalk or uh, I'll, I'll come back to the, our, trail, our sort of major trail concept in a bit. This is Middlefield right at um, sort of looking down at Marsh. Uh, this is one of the key areas we looked at for the, uh, the biking tour. Um, essentially, if the bike lane goes away, if you have the turn lane, and, and as I just showed you, uh, here's another example of what could be a, a complementary improvement where you, you really, you know, you, you just pay a little bit extra attention to continuity of that uh, bicycle facility. It doesn't necessarily have to be a separate five-foot um, bike lane. Uh, there's newer treatments that are, that are established and, and really are approved. Uh, to just help position cyclists uh, and drivers accordingly. Um, we have a, a big concept we call the Beta Ridge Greenway. Um, I, I, I was man managed the, uh, the Palo Alto Bicycle and Pedestrian Transportation Plan. Uh, we expanded their Beta Ridge corridor from one to three. Um, you know, just a great concept of linking the Bay Trail uh, and, and the open spaces in the waterfront up to the foothills. You know, it's kind of a, a large concept to help you to sort of organize and implement 
a series of improvements over time. So we think Marsh is really one of the key corridors to look at in, in the relative short term. Uh, you have the, the drainage channel project on, on the right hand side, just looking to, to improve that and, and potentially you can cap that. Uh, we, we'd love to be able to study that and, and, and say, is, is that a good option? Or you also have a lot of the, the, you know, the ground on the left hand side that could be sort of a meandering path. You also have some alternative parallel corridors that are relatively low volume, slow speed streets. Um, so we've, you know, we've done a lot of these sort of hand sketch drawings with, uh, and brought them into our, our computers to, to really just, you know, generally convey those, the, the complexity of what's going on there, uh, but it, hopefully in a relatively straightforward way. Um, you know, that same corridor, obviously the Atherton Channel continues right in front of the park, and I see just another wonderful opportunity here to uh, clean up the edge of that channel, uh, you know, take that fence out or, and move it much uh, closer to, to the, the water and have a two-way path uh, so you can be able to cycle or, or walk with your child or with your stroller um, along this, this line, uh, linking up with Marsh or, or turning around and linking back up with uh, some of the school facilities. So we had a couple concepts there. We costed those out. Um, and those are you know, some of the big trail pieces of our, of our plan uh, to date. The other uh, being sort of what we're calling the Grand Boulevard Greenway. So we have the east-west Beta Ridge and we have the north-south uh, Grand Boulevard Greenway. Um, I think you guys know the conditions here, pretty horrible. Uh, jumped out of the median, took this picture, you know, just sort of crazy what's going on. Um, so, in the, you know, I, I think the, the big message here is if you're just going to look at adding a six-foot sidewalk, um, I think it's kind of waste of money. Um, we we want to think a bit bigger. You have two lanes of traffic in either side of you, uh, for the most part. Uh, why should folks be, you know, be speeding up necessarily through Atherton? Uh, you know, if you add a, a trail on one on the on the Atherton side on, on the west side, um, you know, you could really help to clean up those offset intersections. Um, and uh, folks could have you know, good access both along for any you know, short stretch uh, and then better, better opportunities, safer opportunities to cross. And so we've identified really sort of a, a, a kind of a phasing sequence, although that's up for discussion with the stakeholder advisory group. But generally, um, the, the, the key I want to convey here is that we, we know that we've been talking with Caltrans a bit about an upcoming hybrid pedestrian signal or a potentially a signal at Selby. This would be the other obvious location to think about that. Um, you know, let's try and work with Caltrans or, or drum up some support to just make sure that we're putting it in the right spot to begin with. Uh, we have a couple concepts for kind of shifting the, the crosswalks to be able to um, have the crosswalk where you have the median where there's not a turn lane. So you have a nice generous 8, 10 foot, 12 foot space where you can do a two-step, two-phase uh, uh, crossing uh, you know, you're not stuck on a tiny island where you don't have to race across all, all uh, what would be uh, four lanes in this scenario. Um, other one being at Selby and Fifth, at the Selby Lane to Fifth Avenue uh, connection. Uh, there's transit, there's um, you know, a lot going on. I think, you know, in terms of uh, being strategic for funding, really looking to partner with North Fair Oaks. Um, a lot of the funding coming out is really uh, focused on disadvantaged communities. Uh, partnerships. Um, you know, this is a safe route to school route as well. So, and, and then you have you know bike lanes, et cetera, other opportunities to make that crossing safer. So we've tried to advance the concepts the best we can with our budget and, and not having sort of the detailed engineering drawings. Uh, we've put some math to all of this. Um, you know, the Grand Boulevard Greenway is a grand total, um, and the Beta Ridge Greenway. Um, and both of these need some feasibility. Um, to make sure they're even feasible, uh, but these are good placeholder estimates. And then we have, um, you know, just the, those sort of grand bikeways, middle field again, and, and uh, Valparaiso. We didn't, really, we didn't cost that out because you already have funding uh, to, to move forward with that. And that's I, my understanding that's mainly Menlo Park leading that effort. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think really where there's, there's some good opportunity to, to discuss how to utilize some local funding strategically in the short term would be how to influence some of these bicycle boulevards where you are just adding some clear directional signage uh, with some minor improvements maybe for pedestrians to help uh, just improve the corridor for both modes and you can do it you know, relatively inexpensively. Uh, hopefully you can match that up with other drainage uh, money as, as well. Uh, some intersections improvements, I think we'll hear about Millfield tonight and 
We have a placeholder for um, uh, that sort of rain garden I talked about, as well as on, on, uh, at Elena and Isabella, as well as at Middlefield and Oak Grove. We were out there, and it's just a really tight intersection uh, right at the high school there. Uh, lots of activity, and uh, I'm assuming in the, in, in during the school commute period, we were there. Buses were, were flipping out into the into the oncoming traffic lane. So, um, you know, definitely would need some more design. Um, but we know that it's it's would be a big move potentially that to clean up those corners. Um, so you're looking at a you know relatively large uh, amount of money, but a lot of that um, you know can kind of happen concurrently and, and probably would move forward unless you had you know good grant opportunities and really reaching the net was part of the next steps. Uh, you want to prioritize this list. Uh, we're going to be going to council early next month um, for a study session input, and then it's uh, we want to make sure we have the environmental approach nailed, uh, and then it's about finding those partnerships. Um, you know, who can we team with? What's the right project? That's strategic, um, so, so we can advance some of these concepts beyond paper. Uh, and you know, I, my, my understanding is that uh, Gordon's you know moving forward with uh, potentially a small add-on for us to, to write uh, this grant. Uh, this active transportation program is a really key opportunity coming up um, due in May, and it's a two-year call for projects at $260 million statewide. So there's a good opportunity if we, do, if we are able to find that partner. I'm thinking it's North Fair Oaks, but possibly everyone in Mellow Park. Uh, we're going to have that discussion at this uh, stakeholder advisory group uh, and see where that takes us. <coughs> Um, we had a whole lot of money on, you know, spent on uh, changing El Camino. Yes. And um, I understand El Camino belongs to the state, not to, not to the town of Ashton. Correct. We're not we're not saying that that's money that you'd be on the hook for. Uh, it's just what it's going to take. Um, you know, and, and the plans are all planning level estimates. We don't have, you know, we need to do a lot more survey. But uh, as a first step, we think. Uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollar target for to do a study of El Camino. So, similar to what's happening right now in Menlo Park, I'm looking at some traffic maneuvers at, um, I believe, Ensenal, or, um, and then looking at bike lanes across the corridor. So that's the first step. And then, you know, we, you know, we know Caltrans is actively looking at these uh, crossing improvements. So maybe there's an, uh, maybe we'll pique their interest uh, with the project because we know it's a regional corridor of, of major importance. And um, but you're very different in the sense that, you know, obviously you have a very different approach to, um, you know, development um, and, and just sort of, you know, back, having your back to El Camino. So that, that actually gives great opportunity for that trail concept that I was talking about. It's really intriguing. It's, it wouldn't happen anywhere else along the corridor. Question. As part of the planning process, has there been any traffic simulation to determine what would happen if the existing quantity of traffic flow uh, during uh, commute hours were to continue on El Camino Real, um, what the congestion would look like were to go from three lanes to two lanes? That would be the next step, um, to, be to, to actually have that study. And that would be, you know, you need to do some design, probably need to do a little bit of environmental, a lot of outreach for Caltrans. So that's, that's kind of the first tier recommendation is to, you know, move forward with that study. I, I can say that you know we're not blank you know we're, we're being we're trying to be strategic and not blanket the whole side with you know to rip, ripping out turn lanes. I mean we're keep we're, our concept is keep open Valparaiso right hand turn to keep open Selby right hand turn. Uh, it's just in between where you have, we think you have you have some you know lot we have to look at it, but um, certainly on on the face seems more feasible than just you know putting a line on a map. We've, we've gone that extra step to to try and anticipate some of those constraints. But, but I guess the question is, um, is there a hypothesis that um, that we can go from three lanes down to two lanes for much of, um, of El Camino without causing the kind of congestion that exists in Menlo Park, for example? Uh, it's possible. I mean, it's definitely possible. And uh, you know, the, the con that, that sort of stacked concept with the trail uh, you know, we might leave the other side at three lanes, um, and so you'd have somewhat of a, of a you know, different concept. But, um, I mean, they're already getting stuck at Valparaiso or at uh, Ensenal or, or, you know, one of those intersections or further into Menlo Park. So I, what, I, what, I, what I would gather, and I haven't been out there, you know, a lot to observe or see the numbers, but you'd probably have to kind of hurry up and wait or, or 
a wait and wait um, scenario. Well, I mean, so instead of hitting traffic when you get to Valparaiso, you'd hit traffic when you get right into Atherton. So, I mean, it, that's all that to be determined. And, and yeah, and we, we, we are, we don't have the budget or the, the you know, that's scoped in to really uh, give you a solid answer. That's really the next phase. And mm -hmm. I think the point I want to make is that there's few alternatives that I find appealing without looking at that big move. Um, is, is it an option to reduce the lane widths in uh, Camino Real, or is, are those stipulated by the Mud CD? Uh, um, you know, Caltrans has been uh, quite amenable to 11-foot lanes, which is relatively new for them. Uh, not new for a lot of other folks, but 10-foot um, lanes are, are also, there's, there's been shown to be no safety degradation when you know, the 10-foot lanes. I haven't seen that in El Camino anywhere. Gordon, do you have any input on that? I, I don't. Um, but I think as the, as the committee has pointed out, um, that Caltrans does have jurisdiction over El Camino Rail. I will, I will mention, uh, I was involved in another community with a Caltrans uh, highway, and they were very cooperative if, as the, as the town, we, we, we submitted for a grant, we got the funding, and then Caltrans was glad to grant jurisdiction and an encroachment permit to implement the improvements on their highway because they would benefit our residents. So I'd say the same is certainly a possibility here. And if I might just quickly add, um, you know, while we are kind of going big with that, that concept, uh, trying to get folks to kind of see the vision, um, you know, the, that crosswalk maneuvering and trying to have a crosswalk that links up with a, a wider segment of, of the, the median, that's independent of the lane, you know, the lane reduction. So even if that didn't fly or wasn't even studied, as, Cal as Caltrans moves forward, you know, we'd hopefully be able to say that we've you know, uh, added a few ideas to the table and, and maybe that would uh, result in a better hybrid pedestrian signal because you could do one leg of, of El Camino without having to slow down the other, you know, folks going northbound, get to that meeting and, and then hit another button. And so you're, you're, you know, you're not slamming down the whole corridor to cross the, the whole 120 feet, whatever it is. Um, one question. Um, um, in the active transportation program, um, you said that the, um, the, the applications are due May 21st. Yes. Um, is, that a, the, that, is that when they're first being accepted, or is that, is that's, that a that's deadline? That's the deadline. And after that, then what? Uh, then it goes uh, into um, Caltrans for review. Uh, I, I believe I forget when they, they kind of uh, bring them back out or they announce the winners. I believe in August. For those who don't uh, uh, sort of win at the statewide level, uh, you automatically get sent to the re your regional MPO because uh, the way that the, the funding gets distributed, there's you know, chunks that, that Caltrans is holding and just distributing based on their own uh, very detailed set of guidelines, which we already have. Um, and then, but there's also sort of formula money going to each of the MPOs and some going to rural communities. Uh, and my, our, my understanding is M MTC is going to uh, have a supplemental questionnaire as well. Um, so if we, you know, if you weren't successful with the statewide, you get kicked over to 